practicing? Yeah. Well, we came in, what did I do? Yeah, what did you do? Yeah, um, you know, this was kind of unique because we wanted to get on like our normal week schedule. So instead of having like our normal day after the game, Sunday we had our, our off day as like that's mandatory part of training camp. So that day just came in, watched the film, um, got a little workout in, and then tried to spend as much time with my family as possible. And then, you know, yesterday we come in and do our normal uh, day after the game routine and, you know, watch the film with the coaches and get a workout in and kind of start looking ahead to the next week. And then yesterday, you know, my usually my Tuesday routine is come in and, and watch, you know, a few games that the team we're playing, get a little workout in, and, and that's it. And then try to get ahead on the game plan wherever the coaches are at that point. Not going about Carolina is your next game? Or no, no, Minnesota, yeah. No. When are you guys going to start? getting into Carolina in depth other than? Um, I think the coaches are, you know, but for us as players, like we got to be worried about what we're playing against this week. Um, you know, the good thing is, is, you know, the last game is that Thursday and then you have, it's almost like playing a Thursday night game and have an extra time to get ready for that first week. So, um, you know, right now we're concerned about Minnesota and, and it, I know the coaches are probably doing some of their own stuff, getting prepared for Carolina. But I think, especially this third preseason game, we really want to be focused on, on the Vikings. What's your biggest benefit out of exhibition? Well, I think especially coming to a new team is just playing in games with guys. I think that's that's the best thing and go out and, you know, you practice so long against your own defense to go out there and, and play in a real game and, and get to know your guys and how they do on game day and, and then kind of just start coming together as a, as a unit in that way. Ryan, the fumble obviously got a lot of attention. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to take that away, uh, you know, it seemed like you, you played fairly solidly. How would you – did you come away with that impression of your performance? Or were you yeah, well, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's hard. I kind of thought about it when I came up here and talked to you guys after the game. You know, it, it sucks to feel like, you know, you didn't do well. But really, when you go back and watch the film, the only third down we didn't convert was the first one of the game. And after that, we just – it was turnovers. So we really never gave ourselves a chance to um, have a sustained drive. We had some plays where we moved the ball, threw the ball down the field. Um, you know, so I felt good about that. You know, the – the ball slipped on my hand. I, I literally can't tell you the last time that happened to me. It's just a freak, freak play, and you know, hopefully it never happens again. So I wasn't really too concerned about that either. Um, you know, glad it happened in the preseason and not the, and not the regular season. So I think you just try to look at the negatives, you know, correct those, and then look at the positives and keep building on that. Yes, sir. Been especially efficient on the play action. Is that uh, you? You've obviously played with Kyle before. Mm -hmm. Is that a testament to, to him calling those plays at the right time? Because the, the running game really wasn't. Clicking. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's not even you know such such a thing as the right time. I think Kyle understands defenses really well, and he knows when you run a play action. As long as the team's honoring run, even if we aren't running the ball that well, you know, if, if a team is a, a sound defensive team and they have to, you know, they honor the run, and Kyle knows where to attack with with the play action game. So, um, you know, even in, in going back to the other night, hitting Marquise on that play, you know, it was a well designed play. We knew, um, you know, where where the hole would be in the coverage, and you just got to make sure that. They just don't totally, you know, drop back when you're when you're giving a run fake. So um, it's been really fun to come around this second time with Kyle and have a better understanding of who we're trying to affect on play action passes. You know, last time I would just do the play action and you know throw where number one said to the throw to number one, and now to understand you know what player he's trying to affect with with a certain action, it's been pretty cool. Kyle's talked about you know, not showing much in the in the preseason, but are you even on the same page? Now, with this offense, that you know that what you're showing in the preseason, how it's going to impact what you do in the early weeks of the season? Yeah, I think, and, and the other thing, too, is, you know, this being a new year, a new staff, a new team, I think, um, you know, teams don't really know, you know, necessarily how we're going to play. So when you play in the preseason, you definitely want to go out there and play well. That's for sure. You don't want to go out there and just say, hey, we're going to hold everything back because, if you hold everything back, then you don't really have much else to go out there and do. So I, I don't. I never want to use that as an excuse for anything. But I think, um, you know, where we're at, where we've been practicing, I think practicing against the Broncos those two days really helped, and running some stuff that we wouldn't necessarily run in, the, in a preseason game. So I feel, you know, pretty good with where we're going to be when we get to those regular season games, as far as what the what'll be in the game plan. You mentioned that night after the game, but this is the first time you're going to be facing adversity as a, as a 2017 49ers. Uh, was that emotion, or has this team really had to do some of that? Well, I think, you know, when I, when I talk about that, it's just everything's kind of been smooth sailing. You know, we practice against each other every day. We have our ups, and but that's not really, you know, any adversity. I think it's just you go and you, and you look at that game, and really on the offensive side of the ball, you never really give yourself a chance to do anything when you turn the ball over that many times. So, you know, to come back and, you know, 
put the work in that day after the you know the day after the game, get the corrections made, and now move on to the next week. I think that's that's a big thing, and you know I really like you know how we responded, and people are excited to go for this week. Team for the last few years, we haven't seen a young quarterback develop maybe as quickly as CJ mm -hmm. has. Are there things that are unique to him and his work ethic that you see behind the scenes that maybe you haven't seen throughout your career from other guys? Well, I think I, I mentioned it before. I think CJ's biggest uh, advantage coming in is was playing in a pro pro style offense in college and calling plays in the huddle and knowing a game plan and dropping back from under center and, and doing the types of things that we do here. I think guys who maybe play in a spread type system would have would have difficulty coming in and um, doing all those things. So I think he was already ahead of the curve having having that um, you know experience at, at Iowa. And um, you know secondly, you know he comes in and you know studies and, and is taking you know asks a lot of questions, takes a lot of notes. So I think that's always a positive too. But I think like I said, his biggest thing was the preparation that you know an offense a, a Big Ten school like Iowa really gave him coming into this this system. Right, you broke your arm last season, your left arm. Can you take us through maybe, the, was there any surgery you had to have? Was, what was the process like coming back from it? And did you have any flashbacks just in these early exhibition games being back in like live action? No, not at all. I think, you know, to me, the injuries that I've had have all kind of been freak things. You know, when I hurt my knee, my, my cleats got stuck in my ground and got twisted up. And when this happened last year, I mean, I've probably hit, been hit on my forearm a thousand times. and. This time it was just a direct helmet, you know, on, on there. So yeah, I had surgery. They put a plate in there, and really it was kind of a boring rehab because it was you got to just let the bone heal, you know. So you do stuff to try to keep your, um, you know, your fingers moving and stuff like that. But um, you know, you just waited for the bone to heal, and then you were cleared, and everything was back to normal. So it was actually pretty pretty easy compared to when I had to, you know, do um, ACL rehab. It's still in there. Yeah. Yep. So it's reinforced now. Brian, we've seen you throw a lot of deep passes in practice, but we haven't seen you throw one in the preseason uh, yet. Is that something you'd like to get a few reps in before the regular season starts, just so you can um, on that at game speed? Yeah, I mean, it's what, what you know we're trying to do, what we're coached to do, and and you know we talk about what we're playing out there. We had one called last week, and we just didn't get the right coverage for it. So, you know, sometimes you know it just doesn't work out the way you'd like to. But I think um, having hit the ones that we had in practice, I feel pretty confident with the guys that. Are running them and, and how we're throwing them, and I think you know it's something that is part of this offense. And eventually, you get the right look and you let it go and let those guys run underneath it. Oh, Mark, Sean is not necessarily huge. He's not necessarily doesn't have blazing speed, but obviously been productive for a long time. What have you come to appreciate for how he's been able to, to do that? Well, just because he's not tall doesn't mean he's. I mean, the, Pierre is solid, and that's the thing that I've noticed is he, he uses his body really well to get open. He runs really good routes. He's an experienced receiver, so he knows how to win. Um, you know, that's the thing w w about Pierre is, you know, even though he's not, you know, tall, he's not six four. I think Pierre uses his body really well, and and to me, um, he knows the system really well, and he knows the routes that we're running. And he knows, um, you know, like the other night, the pass that I threw to him across the middle, how to come flat in front of the safety. Like that's a veteran, you know, experienced receiver who's played a long time, played a lot of good football. To be able for me to throw that ball with confidence, I have to trust Pierre that he's going to come across, and he's done it, you know, every time. And and I think we've built some good chemistry there. And and to have trust in, in a guy like that, you know, it's invaluable because there's going to be a lot of times where, you know, you just bank on him winning and, and protecting the ball and coming at a good angle. And it's something that he's done from day one.